Hi. Hi. Justin. Yes, straighten out my papers. Just, I straighten out my head sometimes by writing things. Sometimes I can't think clearly unless I write them down. And that's how I kind of figure out some of the things that are going on inside of me and kind of how to put them in a way to express. And I want to make sure I don't miss any of this because this is something really important to me tonight. See, I struggle with pretty fierce depression. Um, it is exceedingly difficult for me, and let me take off my hat for a moment on this one. It is exceedingly difficult for me most of the time to see myself in a positive light. Um, it's not that I think I'm particularly bad, it's just most of the time, I don't think that I particularly matter or am particularly useful as a human being. This, now, that doesn't mean it's true. See, depression is a distortive disease, kind of like when you have body image issues and you stand in front of the mirror and what you see isn't what's actually there. Depression kind of shuts down joy and there are times it can shut out hope. Now, I didn't get up here tonight just to tell you that I'm sad. I got up here tonight because this is something that I'm still regularly working through. And there are some things that have helped. And I really hope that something that I say tonight, that if somebody here is, is struggling with depression, they can help you guys. The, now, I do need to let you know, I'm not a doctor. They, there is actually some brain chemistry things that it's good to ask a doctor about. I am not a trained counselor. What I am is somebody who works with depression, who lives with depression, and who has better days some days. And these are things that have helped me have those better days. The first point, let yourself feel what you need to feel. We have this idea in our culture that if you're not feeling joy or determination that, there, that you have a bad attitude. But the truth is, we need all of our feelings. And the fact is that when you're feeling something intense, whether, even, if it's, even if it's happy, even if it's sad, when it's really overwhelming, instead of pushing it back, take a moment, stop where you are, and actually verbally say yes. I mean, yes. And let yourself feel whatever it is that you're needing to feel. A lot of times you're gonna find that just letting yourself feel that will put your feelings back into a context, not necessarily where they're in control, but where you can work with them. And where they're actually gonna, you'll find work with you. Because our feelings are kind of part of ourselves and you don't get better at depression by ignoring yourself. Uh, which brings me to my next point. Talk to yourself. I, I know that's a big taboo, but it's not crazy unless you don't know who said that. And honestly, even at that point, if your brain is going through the backflips necessary to create a voice that is saying things, there's probably something there that you're pushing back. There's probably something there that you do need to learn how to listen to. What I'm talking about is learn to listen to the voices that, the thoughts in your head 
that are telling you the things that are making you feel depressed because those come from places, ways we're identifying ourselves, uh, ways, ways we're pressuring ourselves, things that we feel ashamed of. Learn to listen to those thoughts. And guess what? You can talk back to them. You don't have to leave a thought as an open thought, open-ended. And you don't actually have to believe everything you think. If your brain comes up with this idea and says, as, hey, I, hey, you don't know what you're doing, you can actually reply with something like, I know, but it's going to be OK. Well, how do you know it's going to be OK? I don't know, but it's going to be OK. And, and kind of part of why you would go into it's going to be OK is because there is a very serious question you have to ask yourself. When you hear a thought, when there's a thought that you have that's particularly sad or gets you down, you need to ask yourself, would I ever, would I ever want to say this, like this, to someone I love? And folks, you got to know, this isn't actually just for you. See, humans are wired so that we automatically do what we practice. So if what you're practicing when you're when you're having these inner monologues going on is mean stuff, guess what? It's going to come out against people you love. And the fact is that identifying yourself, see, ident there may be times when you really do have a criticism that's coming up in your head that that is valid. It's something that you actually have to work on. If I'm drinking every day just to go to sleep, I probably should work on that. I should probably see what's going on with that. But there's a way you can say something in a way that is framed with love and caring. And you can say something in a way that is framed with shame. And one of the biggest differences is going to be that when you're shaming somebody you're looking at just how how bad that person is if you've done something bad you need to focus on what the behavior is on focus on what the changes are there that can make that another source of shame can be perfectionism because we have this idea that's really prevalent in our culture that we can't fail at all ever all any time and, well, frankly, no matter how fantastic and great you are, you're going to mess up. And that means you're trying. That means you're pushing things. We need to be able to be okay with being imperfect because otherwise we're going to end up shaming ourselves in, out of something that's just, frankly, not realistic. Next point. Own the fact that you have depression. Now, this is not the same thing as letting it define you. What I mean here is there's a lot of power to be gained in just recognizing and even, even stating that you have depression and your thoughts are regularly being distorted. It's kind of like, now, with it's kind of like with the tornado. If you, if you have a tornado coming by and you say, oh, I acknowledge you. Well, it's not just going to go away, but it, it does give you a chance to get into a cellar. Acknowledging that you're actually going through this, acknowledging that this is actually a problem, lets you find lists like this to go through. Tornado aside, um, <laughs> the next point I'd bring up is go on walks. <laughs> it seems small, but not only does exercise physically help, but changing your environment can change your mindset. And it, that can be just enough to get your head out of whatever place it's in. 
that's, that's bringing you down. Next point's pretty big. Do not isolate yourself. This one's hard. When you feel like you're not worth anything, sometimes the last thing you want to do is be around other people, even people that you really care about, and sometimes especially people that you really care about. But you cannot do this, and here's why. Like I've said, depression is distortive. To get a perception check, to be able to get that feedback that you need, that's not going to happen by yourself. You're just putting that on a loop. You need to be able to be around other people so they can help you see the things that you aren't seeing on your own. And on that point, surround yourself with people that inspire you that encourage you, and that believe in you. Cut out the people who make you feel like crap as much as you can. You don't need them, and really, they don't need you, not because you're not worth something, but because you're big enough for other things, and so are they. Last part, talk to someone. I don't care if it's your doctor, I don't care if it's a counselor, I don't care if it's your best friend, I don't care if it's Joe from three blocks down who's holding a sign up. I don't care if it's me, just talk to somebody. Because, and this is not to seek pity. This is not to seek pity. This is to be honest about something that you are going through. And just to have that moment to be real, because when you have something that you're covering up, up, you can't be owning it. If you're covering it up all the time, you're constantly having to adjust yourself for what you're covering. In that case, you are letting it own you. Now, like I said, I still struggle. I have days when I want to sleep so that I don't have to be awake. I have days when I don't think I'm worth anything. The most heartfelt part, and I'm choking up, which is why I have the notes. <laughs> but I also have days where all of the things I've talked about tonight give me a lifeline and pull me up. I'm not alone in facing depression. And if this is something that you go through, neither are you. You need to know that. Which brings me to this place. While at this place, I'm surrounded by people who have encouraged me, who do believe in me, and they're inspiring, and in many ways can be every bit as broken as me. But they do and say some of the most beautiful and some of the most ridiculous things that have been an encouragement. I have made and am still making friends here that in different ways help me keep perspective. They encourage me to not stay stuck and show me that even those of us who feel broken can be amazing. This place has been a lifeline for me and a way, a big way to keep myself from isolating. Actually, my first night here, um, I was dragged here uh, by, by one of the circus freaks, Kasha, who saw that I was isolating. So I want to say, and you in the audience, are a part of this just as much as anybody who's up here on the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Open Stage.